The Children of the 90s is a cohort study that began in the early 1990s with the recruitment of more than 14,000 pregnant women in the Avon area. The health and development of their children has been studied in great detail ever since, and this spring the first young people began to turn 21. My name's Catherine Nightingale, and I went to Bristol to find out about the study's past and how the young people's coming of age is affecting its plans for the future. Over to George Davies Smith, Scientific Director of the study. The women filled out questionnaires and then at the time of delivery um, their offspring entered the study and over the subsequent period both the mothers and the offspring have uh, completed many questionnaires, have come to many clinical examination sessions, um, have provided many biological samples and information on development and health and well-being. So the um, biological samples that have been collected started during pregnancy when blood samples were collected from the mothers and then at birth a sample of blood was taken from the umbilical cord um, to give an offspring measure. The placentas were collected and we still have the placentas stored. Um, subsequently milk teeth were collected. There was the children of the 90s tooth fairy uh, who uh, helped collect the milk tea. Uh, repeat blood samples have been taken, urine samples have been collected, uh, toenails, hair has been taken. So a large range of biological samples have been collected. Some of the samples have been used repeatedly. So for example the blood samples, a very large number of Assays have been done on the blood samples. DNA was extracted from blood and has had uh, everything from single variant genotyping through to the, the whole genome analysis, which has been done on, as I say, 10,000 of the mums, 10,000 of the offspring, and 2,000 of the offspring are having whole genome sequencing carried out at the moment. So those samples have been intensively used. Some of the other samples were collected and t taken to provide a resource for the future without any very clear idea what that would be. But, for example, we currently have two or three projects ongoing on the placentas, whereas for many years they weren't used, but it's been excellent that they were kept and stored um, and preserved so that they could now be used as technologies advance. Professor Jean Golding, who set up the study, says that collecting these biological samples was unusual at the time. At that stage, no other study, no other big study, was collecting biological samples for genetic studies at all. We started by saying there's so many things in the environment now that are different than they were 50 years ago. Let's collect information on all of it. So we knew that we were probably just collecting stuff and sitting on it until technology caught up with us. I had to fight some of the lab people because they were all for throwing these samples away. Nobody was interested. Nowadays, they're all screaming for them. The problem with the biological samples is that they're a finite resource. Um, the DNA is much easier because you can do so much more with a tiny amount. Nowadays, researchers are grateful for all that data collection. About 600 research, research groups utilising the data. And what kind of studies are they doing? Well the studies range from uh, genetic studies, there's a large number of genetic studies going on, uh, studies of health and well-being, there's, then there's lots of studies which fit better into the category of social science, studies about labour market entry, about social mobility etc. There's studies that range from studies of psychological well-being, the influence of bullying right the way through to studies that are taking ultrasound measures of the liver to look at the development of uh, fatty liver. So every domain of, virtually every domain of life. Meanwhile in the lab, the samples keep on coming. So how many samples would come through in a, in a day? It varies. Um, how many people have you got in today? Um, you're probably going to get about just under 20, I think. People? Yeah. Okay, so we've got 20 people and each one has like uh, 13 samples to add a cough and then they also get like earrings, uh, cell line samples just to lock and keep uh, transforming. Um, yeah, and then 
and they'll get put in the freezer and stored them with and scanned so we know where they are. As the children become adults, ways of collecting information will change, as will the focus of the study. Well, it's, I mean, it's a very busy period of people's lives. Many of them are sort of leaving home, going to university, entering their first jobs, if not going to university, trying to get a job, moving about because of that, beginning to establish their own uh, families. We are recruiting the next generation, so we're already starting to recruit the offspring of the children in the 90s, so the grandchildren in the 90s, um, as it were. Being such a busy period for people's lives, they might not be as enthusiastic about completing questionnaires, coming to clinics. So we're obviously developing ways of keeping track of people through online questionnaires, things which they can complete in their own uh, leisure time, thinking of ways of remote uh, data capture uh, and also through data linkage so there's been a big ent exercise obtaining informed consent for linking to GP records hospital records and other routine data sources the issues that I've attempted to develop uh, is to uh, have an increased involvement of the fathers and so the clinic that's currently underway is the first time that the fathers have actually come in for a clinical examination they filled out questionnaires in the past, as we have a lot of information about them, but they haven't undergone uh, examinations. And there we're trying to we're trying to see the study really as a as a study of, of family health, well being, uh, the, the development of family members together, and in particular looking at men's health in the context of the family. The second one has been to recruit siblings. So the siblings have never been have, there's been no data collection on siblings at all. So now we are recruiting the siblings into the, into the study, uh, not to have the same density of clinical examinations, but um, questionnaires and start collecting biological samples on the siblings. Uh, I have a, now a particular interest in uh, epigenetics, and we've recently obtained um, uh, funding to obtain whole genome um, methylation data or epigenetic measures on the uh, cohort and expanding that area uh, rapidly. We'll give the last word to Jean. The focus now has to be on mental health of the adults and what's happening to them, but also on how well are they uh, acting as parents and what are the problems with their own children. Because we have so much information about uh, their childhood, um, to see how that's reflected in the next generation is going to be really, really exciting.